Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Cisco Optics Podcast, where we talk about pluggable optics for networks. Single-mode fiber transformed telecommunications in the 1970s and 1980s by raising the ceiling for communication bandwidth over transoceanic distances. It took years of R&D to get there, though. Remember, we're sending light through tens of kilometers of glass without regeneration. I mean, imagine how pure the glass of an 80-kilometer thick window needs to be in order to see through it. This is episode 47, and we continue our conversation with Rasheen McCool, expert in fiber networks for telecommunications and scientific instrumentation at Corning Optical Communications. We get into fiber cabling, connectivity, and density. Rasheen McCool is a senior market and technology development manager for Corning Optical Fiber and Cable, specializing in single-mode fiber and access networks. She provides technical and market insight for Corning's global fiber and cable product line management teams. Rasheen has 30 years of experience in engineering and optical communication systems and subsystems, including many years designing networks for advanced radio telescopes. Rasheen has held project management and coordination lead roles in diverse teams throughout her career. Rasheen is the acting chair of the Women in Fiber Committee for the FTTH Council Europe and is the winner of the Corning Optical Communications You Make a Difference Award 2022 for her leadership of diversity initiatives in Corning. Rasheen holds a master's degree in electrical and electronic engineering from the University of Nottingham, United Kingdom, and is a chartered member of the Institute of Engineering and Technology. And now join me as I talk with Rasheen McCool. Well, let's get back to the fiber itself then. Um, so you mentioned, um, you know, you have to be very aware of the various applications and the, the, the relevant parameters important for a specific application. So are there any other parameters, any properties of the fiber that are important that we haven't uh, hit on yet? Yeah, so one of the things about fiber and anybody at Cisco who's dealt with fiber, it rarely comes in its raw form, right? It rarely comes as a fiber. It comes mm. within a cable. Right. And so how that fiber behaves within a cable is almost as important as the transmission characteristics itself, right? So, mm. One of the big network trends that has come up recently is density. And the reason that density matters is because everybody is trying to increase the capacity of their networks. In many cases, um, it's not just about the capacity on a single link, but also the connectivity that's required. So the distribution of connection points, and again, we're back to geography. Mm-hmm. Um, it's, it's one thing to have a really high capacity link, but if you have to share that capacity with hundreds of people, in the end, you're going to have to get a fiber link to hundreds of people. And that's gonna be one fiber per person if it's fiber to the home or, you know, maybe it's fiber to the office or something along those lines. Um, And so there's more fiber going into networks, but the space available doesn't change. So the the space where, so everyone gets a fiber, but they all have to connect to something. So the centralized location where they're connecting to, that's where the density is felt. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, it is. Although one of the things that is important to say here is density is a relative term. So we say density very deliberately rather than fiber count because okay. um, because the 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 amount of space available within say the duct ingress on a data center is going to be much larger than the duct size available once you get out into some city and you've got to try and connect people via you know and you're trying to put duct into into city streets Mm -hmm. and so 
density really is about the amount of fibers per square millimeter. And it could be a really tiny, tiny cable mm -hmm. that has 48 fibers in it, but still it has a really high density. Or it could be 1,728 fibers, but still it has a really high density. They both matter because in the end, you're trying to get as many fibers as you possibly can into as small as amount of space as you possibly can. Because eventually, each one of those fibers is going to go to somebody and you want to be able to fan out at some point? Yes. Yes, you want to be able, yeah. you want that connectivity. Um, it, and that that applies in applications like data centers and in um, particularly in access networks mm -hmm. uh, because you want to fan out and you want to distribute your connection points. Um, in certain circumstances on some, you know, really high capacity point to point links, you might just need the, that amount of fiber in order to create the capacity you need from A to B. So that would be so just a really simple depends on trunk the line with just lots of channels, lots of fiber. Yeah. 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 Lots of fiber cores. Now, so why yeah. does it why does the cable matter and why does density matter for fiber? Well, we talked earlier on about bend. And we talked about how you could bend a fiber and any the light would escape through that bend once you get to a minimum bend radius mm -hmm. once you get below that then the light escapes there's another kind of bend which is micro bend now micro bend is really very small perturbations on the surface of the fiber which just create these losses mm -hmm. and one of the places that we see that is in very high highly dense cables um, it's really difficult to measure, um, so there isn't a micro-bend standard, but what we do know is bend resilience, resilient fibers maintain the light within the fiber far more effectively than those that aren't bend resilient, and so that can help with uh, density. So, for instance, Corning have this fiber called SMF28 contour fiber, and that's kind of our platform for density, where we're trying to get as many fibers in as small amount of space as we can. And that fiber has a bend resilience, which allows us to put it into cable, even very dense environments within the cable, and still maintain the fiber performance. So you're talking about having many, many fibers. We're talking like over 100 in a single cable so there's a single jacket or sheath around it but there's tons and tons of these glass fibers and you're saying you've noticed that the more bend resilient fibers perform better in terms of loss than the less bend resilient fibers yes. and presumably there's some kind of i don't know the friction causing stress like on a small scale is somehow accumulating over the length of the fiber is, is that is it's very saying? small. So microbend is is defined as these very small perturbations on the fiber. And so obviously when you've got these very dense environments, you've got fiber that's packed in. And it, it particularly shows up at low temperatures because at low temperatures, the hmm. entire structure of the cable will shrink. Um, and so oh. everything's just under, you know, in a much tighter amount of space. Okay. Um, um, and one of the things you can do is have a bend resilient fiber. The other thing you can do is have a very low outer diameter fiber. So normally, so, fibers sorry, before are about... we get to that, um, quick question: Is bend resilient the same as bend resistant, or yes. low bend radius? Yes. Are they all the same thing? Yes. Or... Yes. Okay. Yeah. So bend resilient, bend resistant. Yes. Low so, bend radius. Same. So, so the same fiber that you were talking about goes into the apartment and someone can just, uh, you know, put it through a corner in the wall. That's the same fiber or the same property that you're talking about here with the micro bending. It's the same property, but it's a slightly different fiber. So the, 
SMF28 contour fibre that I just mentioned, that's their G657A2 fibre. So that has a minimum bend radius of seven and a half millimetres. So not quite as extreme as the five millimetres okay. we've been talking about, but still pretty close. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sorry, you were talking about the outer diameter? Yeah, so the other thing you can do is to reduce the outer diameter. Um, so why does that matter? Well, clearly, just if you're trying to get as much fibre into uh, as a small amount of space as possible, then reducing the outer diameter can give you that extra space. So single mode fibre, standard single mode fibre traditionally has had a 250 micron outer diameter. Once you've put the coating on the fibre uh, and any colouring or marking, that fibre's uh, 250 microns out of diameter. Okay. With the, um, the, the cladding with, glass itself is 125? That's correct. Yes. Okay. Yes. And then um, with, with some of the new fibers, those are low outer diameter fibers. And so they're round about between 190 and 200 mic microns in outer diameter. That gives you that additional space. So you get with with the contour fiber, that's um, that's a 40% reduction in cross-sectional area compared to a standard single mode fiber. So that helps. Mm. And the other thing that helps is that if you have smaller outer diameter fibers, you can potentially allow a little bit more space around the fiber. And that helps, you know, with the microbend um, uh, issues. Uh, and it means that fiber of that kind, when it's in highly dense cables, we can still maintain, you know, the um, low loss that we expect from single mode fiber. Okay, let me see if I can unpack this. So the fiber itself, you don't want to change. That was the fourth part of my conversation with Rashin McCool. Next time, we'll continue with fiber density and bend resilience. Hey, we have a new website. It's optics.podcastpage.io. That's optics.podcastpage.io. You can either listen there or use the same podcast platform you've been using all along. Please subscribe. Better yet, leave a review, especially if you use Apple Podcasts. Remember, we're part of the Cisco Podcast Network where you can find other great Cisco podcasts too. We also have educational videos on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com and search on Cisco Optics. Thank you for listening. This is Pat Chow, Product Manager at Cisco Optics. The next episode is part five of my conversation with Rasheen McCool. Until next time.